Welcome back to Antimatic Chemistry. And today there's going to be a lot of tidy up going on. We've obviously already seen our loot system. I've now created another draw controller. So a lot of tidying up today, a lot of stuff getting on in progress. So let's get started with that. Just some general sort of tools and enhancements. Uh, if you're going to have uh, or be out mining or wherever, you definitely want some way of storing stuff remotely. So for now, I'm actually just going to put an ender chest down and uh, it's going to be a new one. And that ender chest is there purely just to store my tools in. But this is the same one that goes gets fed into there. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we have to change the channel of that. Let's change it to triple orange. That's my normal convention. Create an ender pouch and then shift right click on it and you will get an ender pouch that is triple orange. So we now have one that is uh, apable. If I just right click with the white one, you'll see or hear the one opener there. And the red, the orange one will open this one here. And then I can store in lots of different things like my silk touch pick that's unbreakable. Uh, I could even store this lumbrax that I created. It's cobalt. It is, um, it's double cobalt. It is, uh, I want to say copper rod, cobalt broad axe head, cobalt pattern, uh, plate and a paper binding. And I haven't chosen, uh, the only one I wanted to change that for was to have a night slime plate, but we can't make night slime yet. So whenever I need this, I don't need to worry about ore excavation anymore or how far up it goes. Uh, this isn't unbreakable. You'll see there is a durability to it, but it's quite high. Uh, I've got four reinforced plates on there, but it's still quite a useful tool to have. So yeah, high tool, uh, so sort of lumbrax, and we can just keep it in our storage, um, so our storage, um, what, what do you want to call it, really storage ender chest. And we can access that from anywhere. If I die, I don't lose what is in that chest, which is a very, very nice thing indeed. So that's good for that. Moving on, um, what else do we actually want to do before I head out? Is there anything I have put my A2 system in this chest? Because the next thing we're going to want to do is actually just resurrect this. But we're actually going to improve things a little bit. So I'm just going to go and grab that furnace controller. And if I grab five of that and two of you, we should be able to upgrade this thing with a bucket, actually the bucket of lava. So let me just dump that in there. We'll just get some lava from over back here. We've got this tank, remember? Okay, and we can upgrade this from a furnace generator to a magmatic generator, which is much, much better. And uh, let's just have a look. Magmatic. Magmatic. Tick. There we go, magmatic generator, and that gets it upgraded. Now this will work, but it actually now needs lava to function. So we can just insert lava, and that's something we'll need to actually do as well. So I'll put that in the same chest, and we'll come back to that in a little while. I'm off now to just go and get some copper. Remember, we didn't have very much copper last episode. So I'm going to get that first, and I'll bring you back for some more building, I think. I'm back from mining. And we need a bunch of stuff crafted. So I've got some ores here. We've got some tin, some copper, and two and a half stacks of iron. So that's going to be pretty good. We are, however, going to start off with some copper gears. We're probably going to need them. So I may as well create those anyway. And I've actually got the second. Please, I beg of you, I don't spend this long in the game. Um, I get a Shulker trophy, apparently. Uh, do I get actually anything from a Shulker trophy if I right-click it? Um, okay, that's that's not great. I prefer not, not to drift off. Okay, uh, let me just put that away somewhere where I won't accidentally click on it. Uh, anyway, for that, we need to head off to uh, go into crafting. So chapter two, I crafted a hang glider. Uh, that will give me a few levels of XP. A hang glider just goes in here along with everything else. And of course, you can jump off and uh, yeah, glide across. Suitable for the nether exploration, and uh, that will do for that. I don't need to, really need to do, go into it further, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, over here, we need to craft four machine frames, so I need to get a few things. One is some tin gears to accompany the, the copper gears. I think we've already got those. Uh, some glass, and then again, more of that scandium and indium that we found last episode. Or at least, that we crafted last episode. And with that done, we should be able to then craft our machine frames. So if we just go via the cool, well, I'll just go via this. That's fine. Machine frame, uh, we need four of these. So four, there we go. Expensive to get started, but that shouldn't be a problem for much longer. We've got an induction smelter, which is going to head us towards the steel ingots. That's going to be great. Uh, let's just take a look at the induction smelter. Ooh, arsenic, lumium. This is where we're going to need to go off the nether to go and find some mold. Well, not the lumium itself, but if we have a look at alloying, we need energized glowstone. Energized glowstone is basically a magma crucible. We could do it that way as well. 
Um, that needs a few bits and pieces, but we could do it that way. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, but you don't get very much of that. How much do we need for this? Um, yeah, that, that's doable. It's doable as well. So yeah, we could do it that way. Um, any kind of sand, where do we get arsenic from? Um, we're going to get it from Dissolver. No, no. Arsenic sulfide from pink. Okay, pink dye. That will actually get us arsenic sulfide. Fine. Uh, so we can actually do that. That shouldn't be a problem to get to steel. Uh, that's going to be coming up very shortly. Is there anything else in here that I want first? Mm, no, I think that's that's the more important one. Apart from the fact I want a pump. I want some way of moving lava. So first of all, we need ender tanks. And they shouldn't be hard for us to craft. Uh, so for blaze rods, I need to craft those. I'll come back to that then. And cauldrons, everything else is the same as an ender chest. So that's not a problem, apart from the center block. Uh, so let's actually just get to the uh, let's just get to the quest then. In that case, I can probably get around with this with something else while it crafts steel. Um, or should I? Hmm. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. So arsenic sulfide we need to get from pink, and we can get that just with some rose red, uh, I imagine, and some bone meal. Grab bone meal. I've got some bones. Let's go and grab the bones. I've got the bone meal around as well. Anyway, thanks for coming. By the way, I said yeah, you can get um, <laughs> you can get uh, calcium. I was looking for last episode from bone meal just as easily. And of course, we have the pink generator that we can use for pink dye if you actually want to do it that way as well. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, just basically turn this into arsenic sulfide, and then down into sulfur and arsenic. And there we go. So there's that just going to combine back up again to arsenic ingots. It is good. So we've got everything we need for that. So induction smelter, we need some sand, we need a machine frame, some copper gears, and a redstone reception coil. Redstone reception coil is actually just gold and redstone. So we'll just grab those and some redstone. I've got some copper gears already. So we're ready for that, apart from some sand. And if I just grab some of our favorite uh, stuff for making pretty much anything. Silicon dioxide, uh, it can make sand perfectly fine. So that's what they're going to do there. And then the induction smelter, induction smelter. Uh, what am I short of? Lumium, it's lumium I need next. So that's fine. I'll get everything else done. And then we need lumium. So I need to then also craft a magma crucible. Magma crucible. And what am I short of? I'm short of some glass, some obsidian and some nether brick. Well, nether brick shouldn't be that much of a problem unless the, the recipe has changed. No, it hasn't changed. We're just going to grab some of nether rack and just shove that in the furnace. And that'll get crafted. We've got some glass already in there, so that will do for that part of it. Uh, unless I have any of the smelted form of nether brick already. I've got a feeling I needed them for some kind of breakdown of chemicals, but I don't think I have any ready. Mm, no, I don't see any. Fine, let's wait for that to finish, and I'll bring you back when it is. Magma Crucible crafted. Didn't take very long, and then we can just... Well, we may be able to get stuff out of here with a bucket. Have you got a, th a bucket in there yet? So, yep, I can take Energized Glowstone out of here, and I can probably put it into the drain block. I can, so that's straightforward as long as I do that. And then if we have a look in here, you'll see Energized Glowstone, one bucket worth. And to get the induction smelter going, we need lumium gear, which needs four ingots worth. Uh, let me just see. Is there a way to see uh, how many ingots is that actually worth? I can never remember. Let's just try pouring it out. No, nope, that definitely does not like it. Lumium gear. Uh, can I just pour it into a gear cast? Oh, I need to I need to alloy it into lumium, first of all. Of course I do. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's look in alloying. So, uh, 250 uh, millibuckets is enough for... 144, so we're going to need quite a lot of energized glowstone. So I've got enough for pretty much half a bucket of lumium, I guess. I need some silver and some tin, so let's get those put in. So let's just get some tin and some silver. Which way around is it for, for this alloying? It is one, uh, I want to say something like one to three. So let's just get uh, some silver and some tin. So if I just get 12 tin to get started, I'll just, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother calculating it. Uh, I'm just going to put this stuff in. So silver, tin, 
that can cook up. That should combine into aluminium, I hope. Um, oh no, that's making bronze. Oh no. <laughs> well, it should make aluminium when there's no bronze to actually take up. So energized glowstone. Um, yeah, maybe I need to put more, more tin in there. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so aluminium. We've got four ingots. That's good. I'll pull that out. And I've got some more glowstone cooking up. I've got another uh, three lots of this, basically. I'm not sure how many uh, aluminum gears I'm going to need, but uh, I just want to make sure I have enough of it. There it goes. So I have enough of that going. Uh, I didn't make the fluid transposer because we can just ladle it across in a bucket. So one bucket of energized glowstone is certainly enough for one of these gears. And we'll get the gear. That will then give us the ability to make the induction smelter which will in turn, or should, give us the ability to uh, basically, let me just configure that to not have any outputs. Okay, so this, once I unlock it, should give us the ability to make steel, which then unlocks a bunch of other things. So steel in the induction smelter is just going to be iron and pulverized coal, I'm almost certain. Pulverized charcoal uh, and iron, etc., or probably pulverized coal as well, but charcoal certainly. And um, that's going to need one more thing. We're going to need to build to pulverize stuff. We can use a quartz grindstone if you like, but I don't fancy that. So I actually want a pulverizer. And that's one of the other quests, handily enough. So uh, what are we missing there? We need some potassium ingots. Uh, potassium is K, and that's right on the very left. This column of your periodic table is the stuff that generally goes boom. Um, <laughs> sodium's in here. Uh, yeah, and uh, reactive stuff, really. Um, yeah, so let's just put that in here. We should just be able to get uh, potassium ingots back out, and let's see what else we're missing. Um, pistons, some more copper gears. I thought I had copper gears. Did I use them already? I must have used them. Okay, and I accidentally made bronze, so I need to perhaps make some more copper gears. Uh, one, two, three, four... Uh, that'll make me enough for two years, but maybe I need more than that. So let's just dump the rest in. And yeah, it is normal for my <laughs> my smelter to get polluted like this. Uh, I am not going to worry about it. I think... Uh, oh, actually, I have tin in there. I need to get rid of the tin first. Okay, come back in a minute once I've got rid of the tin. Okay, I think I've got everything crafted. So we're going to pulverize it. Yeah, that's all done. Nice. And let's just drop that there as well. Yep. And now we're just going to pulverize. Let's just look at that steel recipe again. Steel ingot. Um, and then is the one just for coal? Um, that's not coal. Pulverized coal. Yes, absolutely. So coal I was getting from mining. Uh, we could get sustainable stuff with charcoal, but I've got plenty of coal around, so I will cook that up. And I'm just going to dump that left, I think. Uh yeah, I probably just want the red output there. Yep, and then here we're just going to have the input coming from the left-hand side. And probably just one of the inputs. Whoops. Yep, there we go. And then we're just going to get some iron. And hopefully cook you all up into wonderful, wonderful steel. Uh, are you going to process? You are. And off it goes. So hopefully I've got enough in the battery to get some steel. Uh, I do have enough. And this is processing more coal. So yeah, everything is pretty much ready. I'm going to make some more blaze powder because we're going to need that for those ender tanks. And then what I actually then need to do is a pump and to convert the other furnace generator to another magmatic generator. So a fluid pump is the first one that comes up, it seems. And that accepts a range add-on maximum tier of 11. And this should let me pump stuff from, basically, from the nether uh, over here. We need to get plastics to do it. And we haven't got plastics so far, but it's polyvinyl chloride, which we can make with carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. I think I have enough of all of those. So um, let's just go on this side. I know I've got enough hydrogen. So carbon, uh, chlorine. I have, well, I have 64. Let me just actually put some of that back. Um... Yep, I just want to make sure I reserve some. I could just lock the um, the drawers now, but uh, it's fine as is. Uh, yeah, I've got thousands of hydrogen. Give me hydrogen. There we go. Okay, and let's just lock in that recipe. So polyvinyl chloride. That can be locked, and then we'll just dump this stuff in. Let's see how much we actually get out of this. How much do we need for each 
uh, each plastic. We either get 32 polyvinyl chloride, or can we actually make the plastic uh, by smelting? Can we get tiny dry rubber? Well, we can get it from the latex processing unit, which is stuff we can also build, or we can just make it directly. Uh, how much do we need for direct? Uh, we need more. <laughs> we need a lot more. Uh, it's 32 per plastic. Okay, so in that case, do we make uh, this polyvinyl chloride? How do we get lots of chlorine easily? Um, potassium chloride, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is the preferred option there because I've got a lot of it. There we go. Sodium, sodium chloride. Salt, essentially. Yes, something that explodes in water and something that... Um, it is very, 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 very dangerous towards your lungs and your health. Uh, combined together into modern table salt, and that's perfectly fine. That's how chemistry works. So, uh, yep, let's just dump chlorine into there, and then I should be able enough to generate lots more of this quite easily. So I'm going to do a few more of that. So we'll get enough polyvinyl chloride, and then I'll be able to make a pump from it, from the plastic. That is. Okay, we're probably going to need another bucket of lava again, so hopefully well, I'll still have enough in that tank. That's fine. And we're also going to need a uh, regular another bucket, so let's just make a second, well, third one in this case, along with that bucket of water that I keep in my backpack. And then we should be able to make a fluid pump mostly. Uh, oh, the plastic, have you finished? You are. Good. Plastic is done. Fluid pump is also done, and we have that. So we have that quest complete. And we're just going to take, uh, well, I just want to get that bit of water filled back up again. There we go. I can just go back in my backpack. Uh, we're going to take a bucket with us. We're going to want a fluid pump and we're going to want two more things. Uh, we've got some other rewards from quests here. So, uh, yep, yeah, we need to have the aqueous accumulator, get some fluid up there. Um, and you'll see there's a couple of branches open up here. One is this 48 steel ingot. So I've got some steel ingots uh, basically cooking up here. I need to put some more, ch I need to basically generate charcoal here. That's uh, that's gonna be easy enough. Uh, let me just grab some of you, and make sure I have some charcoal cooking while I head out. There it is, and we'll get all that put away. Um, now I'll dump it in here for now. So uh, the charcoal is going to be converted more into steel. So that's that. That's what wing of this this quest thing. There's then two other sections of the quest. One is to submit 10 million FE, so lots and lots of power, and a thousand buckets of water, so lots and lots of water. Now there is only about a million. Uh, well, total capacity is two million in here. So it says this is a good time to scale up power um, in here. Um, it's a good time to scale up energy production, and. <laughs> Please do not submit a thousand buckets manually. I only say this because, of course, it's happened before. <laughs> okay, so please use fluid or similar fluid transport to pump fluids into the task screen after the target quest has been set. So, yes, and we get four diamonds out of it. Not that that matters too much. So to get further further down here, the gods of Atom smile upon you. I did get warned by commenter, by the way, saying that Atom is pretty hard. So you're going to want really good armor, really good uh, sword and melee. Uh, sorry. Um, sword is melee <laughs> really good ranged and really good sword to actually go into there so yeah it's going to be interesting uh do we have anything up no i checked for do we have to go no it looks like we have to go into atom to unlock uh loop fabricators so we have to go there all right so we need to get through this um is there anything else in chapter two i want just yet no, I think it's just four options left because I've made this hang glider. So I now need to go and do a few other things. One, we can do the rest of these quests if we want. Is there any good rewards from them? Uh, wood to iron chest upgrade and drop of evil gets us dirt. Well, I suppose we get the, the drop of evil, uh, the dirt back that we converted into cursed earth. Okay, so uh, these three are just re 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 pretty passive quests, really, to be honest. So we need to build up our infrastructure, not necessarily anything to do with the quest. And wow, that's a, that's a tall tree. Um, we just need to get our infrastructure up and running for lots of other reasons. So I'm going to need to also convert over um that uh i need to get more gold don't i yep i need to go make another mining trip for more gold there's only energized glowstone left in here uh that's gonna get cooked up and then we're just gonna pull gold into uh ingots along with a couple of redstone we should be able to then uh convert the other furnace generator to another magmatic generator because we're gonna need a magmatic generator on both sides of this one over in the nether next to the pump which is pumping into a ender tank, which I'm going to make shortly once uh, I get off camera. 
and then that's also going to pump back uh, or be provided back into the uh, magnetic generator that's going to be over there so it's self-powering then over here we're going to do the same thing we're just going to have a basically a, an ender tank with this magnetic generator and that will just start producing constant power of course not very not huge amounts of constant power but certainly enough to keep a2 alive and other things as well however of course we're going to need um pretty much uh, the, the you know massive sort of power production to get these quests going so let me just go and make those ender tanks and we'll set things up and then see how it looks so I'm over here in the nether just heading down to where the lava lake is I didn't choose to craft any range upgrades because I actually just want to see first of all what the base range is I think it's just be like a three by three or something uh, and we'll just use this uh, lava lake here as uh, as the example um, we're going to want to craft those range upgrades but if you have a look here like the plus 11 one is platinum which we can already get I think it's one of the the sort of byproducts or even the plus 10 one is diamonds which we've got more than enough of I just would need uh, basically some this crystal glass from Atom which I don't have yet unfortunately um, <laughs> But any glass plane should seem to do the job. I need to craft more of the plastic, so I need to get more, get more of that vinyl polychloride. And you'll see I already grabbed some <laughs> before when I last came here. So we may as well clean up here. And to do that, I'm just going to, uh, first of all, be quite careful. Second of all, I'm just going to drop down some cobble. I don't know how good this pump will be, assuming that it actually will pick up lava at all, which I can't know. So let's just get uh, out a few steps. So one, two, three, four uh five whoops uh hmm. one three four five six seven eight nine ten i don't like the that noise and 11 so that's going to be where the pump is and hopefully it's not there okay so let's just drop this around here and hopefully this works like you'd normally expect one of these pumps to work. We'll see very shortly. Haven't used the industrial floor going one before. And as you can see, I left everything inside here just so that uh, nothing was uh, on the side front north. That's fine. Okay, and then let's drop a couple of other things. We want to drop a magmatic generator. We want to drop our or one of our ender tanks. And that should be it, I think. So let's drop the, the tank on top. We'll put the other one away. And then hopefully you are going to work. We just need to feed this with a little bit of lava to get started. And will you work? Let me just grab it from all the way over here. Kind of. There we go. Will you start up? You're going to start up. You've got power. Are you generating any sort of fluid right now? No, you're not. Okay, I clearly need to read the documentation. I just wonder whether it actually just needs a free space underneath or not. I guess not, because that's working. Okay, so I need to go and read upon this. Does it need a filter? Show working area. Um, okay. <laughs> so, it only looks directly beneath itself. Right, maybe I need to set this back up again. Uh, yeah, let me just set that back back up. <laughs> One second. Before I move it, I thought I would try crafting the range upgrade, so I went and did that. The diamond one, not the, uh, not the plus 11 one, which would be platinum, because I just don't have enough platinum yet. So any panes of glass will do. And will you work as a range upgrade? What's the working range now? Um, let's just show working area. Oh, hang on. Uh, you are presumably quite large working area uh, and you're still not filling any fluid uh, unless I just need to press uh, pump when placed above a fluid the fluid pump will take that fluid as a filter and will be able to drain all fluids of the same type in the working area it will search all the fluids yes 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 and uh, you have enough stored energy you just aren't working uh, yet hmm always active Oh, it's currently paused. Fine. Or was active. Still not pumping liquid. Mm, may need to go and check something. 
Ah, got it working. Um, it's not hard to get it working, but um, there's just one really non-obvious thing in that it basically will look directly below it, I, literally a block below it. Let me just turn off that working area uh, for whatever it should be set to, the filter. So for that, you just want to basically make sure there's lava below it. And if you've done this to be a little bit safe like me, just basically knock out the one block there and put some lava down. And then it will immediately say, hey, that's lava. I'll start pumping lava. And you can see here it has lava available, which means uh, we should be able to get it to output. Output tank, and then um, this doesn't seem to want to watch the out output automatically. Uh, I can never figure out how these actually work for um, <laughs> for industrial four going. I would have expected that to just output. But if it doesn't, we can always just do it the other way, which is to hopefully not ruin this by losing my ender tank. And then just hopefully pulling from this. So if we just grab some uh, fluid duct. And let's just dump that here. It is connecting, so that's a good sign. And then let's just put the other one there. So let's just do that. Put the end of the tank back down. And then we can just put a servo in and hopefully pull from the machine. Yep, there it goes. So lava's being pulled out, and it's going to fill both this fluid tank, and it's going to fill this generator, which is going to keep this fed with power. So, yep, that's all good. And we basically now have, well, not infinite lava, but a very large amount of lava. Uh, this has a range upgrade of um, plus 10. Yeah, so if it's plus 10 outwards in every direction, that's basically a diameter of a, either a circle or a square. I'm not sure which one it works on. Uh, of uh, of plus 21 of 21 basically so 21 by 21 and then it just scans downwards and it just keeps on scanning downwards let's just teleport back home and then this side we should just be able to place this one down so we have another ender tank and there we are with the ender tank you can already see it's full of lava we can put it wherever we like we can put it, probably put it underground here i'm going to be rearranging all of this stuff once we get that but i would kind of like this in the background to be honest uh, it's kind of a nice backdrop to everything else. So uh, if we have, let's just knock that through um, and maybe knock this through. Yeah, if we just have, I don't know, maybe wherever that is underneath. Yeah, there it is. So if we have, uh, let's just say power sort of being done here and then we can just input power from wherever really. But uh, if I just get one of you and that will do um we can output lava that way yeah we don't even need anything else and that will just start producing power of course the buffer is not very large with the magmatic generator but we can actually craft speed upgrades once we get gold and redstone i think it is uh for upgrade uh upgrade speed yeah there we go increase speed of operations maximum upgrades four power penalty yeah that's fine but more than that this is basically just producing power and then we should just pull that straight into our e2 system so if i just go and grab that again and then we can just pull power in so i just grab everything there uh yep yeah, everything i need anyway and then we're just going to basically immediately accept it and then buffer it i think so if we just do an energy acceptor and then a energy cell walk off here i'm hoping that that will buffer looks like it will and then up top we can do whatever we want at that point uh, we can have our me disk drives etc etc uh, with a couple of pieces of cable so there we go what was that what exploded what exploded oh, oh it's the fluid duct you know fluid duct <laughs> I keep forgetting, you need a higher tier of fluid duct to, bas to basically carry lava, which means it could, well, in fact, it's probably stopped to the side already because I didn't chunk load it. Anyway, aside from that, if I just dump that, we'll, I think this will just keep it fed. I need to tier, craft the next tier up of fluid duct. You need hardened fluid duct or something like that um, for carrying hot liquids. And I always forget this, so please don't if, you, if you're doing this yourself. Uh, fluid duct, yeah, um, will break if contents are extremely hot or cold. So, 
I need to make hardened fluid duct, which is just uh, the opaque version. I guess we can just make opaque with invar and lead and invar. We can make in our uh, induction smelter directly with nickel and iron. So you get the idea. We can we should go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, that lava is going to run out because it's not chunk loaded. But aside from that, uh, we have um, enemy disk drive. We can put our disks back in and it's online. And of course, we can put that there. Once I find the rest of the cable, of course, we can uh, we can do other. Th oh, the cables right there. Okay, we can have that sort of normal height rather than where it is. And put it right there. And job done. Okay, so we've got an AE2 system up and running with constant power, which is nice. And then pretty much everything else around here needs to be rearranged around this. So we've got some power underneath. I'll need to go and craft some basically hardened fluid duct and go and replace that over in the nether. And then over here, uh, I think what I need to do is move this so it's downstairs and then it gets power pulled from the uh, the generator when once this is filled up, of course. Uh, in fact, it's not going to take very long at all till it is filled up. We can obviously pull more generators or indeed uh, more generators to get more, more power or we can use those speed upgrades to get even more power. It uses lava faster. Entirely your choice which one you choose to do, but I don't want the, the culinary generator anymore. And uh, I'm about to clean things up significantly. So, the, yeah, that's pretty good. How many types do we have available? Uh, a lot. Okay, so I can probably get rid of a bunch of this stuff, this miscellaneous stuff. Uh, probably the compounds chest can all go away. And I'll clean it all up. And there we go. Doesn't that look a lot better? We need to get rid of this boring old iron furnace and replace that with a redstone furnace. That's going to come up next episode. Uh, we need to get a couple of other things like a compactor and a phytogenic insulator as well. That's for growing crops, obviously. And so this one is just mainly for compacting probably just um, the um, blaze powder, <laughs> at least to get started. Maybe um, compactor blaze powder. Do we actually get um, any sort of significant savings by doing that? Nope. <laughs> Because we can just make it in a crafting grid. So that's perfect as it is. Anyway, I'm sure it'll come in useful for something. Anyway, so this is looking nice and clean now. We've got everything set up. I'll continue expanding between the episodes. And then I'm going to go sort out that lava. And uh, from that point onwards, I'll need to basically set up the, another pump. Um, maybe an aqueous accumulator. Maybe another one of those fluid pumps with an upgrade. And then we'll want to be able to submit 1,000 buckets of water. Now, the aqueous accumulator is the one that generates water from nothing rather than pumping and replacing with cobblestone. So for water, that might be more appropriate. Uh, for this, of course, we just need the energy to sacrifice. So uh, is there a task screen in here? Task screen, yeah. So we can just get one of these out. And then I can then just go drop down here and just come around here or something. And then maybe something like that. So yeah. And was it shift right click? Uh, so task. Um, a thousand buckets of water. Yeah, I think. Yeah, water for Atom. A thousand buckets of water, and we need to feed it that into the back via fluid of some kind. Uh, for stuff like that, you want to have an aqueous accumulator, and you want it to be quite fast. Not sure if that's going to be fast enough. I remember aqueous accumulators being terribly, terribly slow. So we may have to go for more like the infinite water source. Uh, something like this. There is a, a much more compact version. This again is quite slow to start, but to get into that, you require graphite, cadmium, and lead. So yeah, anyone got any suggestions? Feel free to put them in the comments below. But we have this running now. You'll see this is already out of lava, so I need to go and sort that out between the episodes. And we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Lots of cleanup. Hopefully that should make things nice and happy for everyone who uh, is uh, attentive to details. So let's put it that way. <laughs> And we'll see you next episode. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, share, click on the bell if you want notifications for more episodes. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.